Hey everybody, welcome to this week's edition of Video Notes for Mr. Flugum's Physical Science class. Today we're going to be talking about designing a valid experiment. And uh, this, these notes will go on page, uh, page 6 in your Physical Science Notebook. All right, let's go ahead and get started. All right, well, here we go. Let's talk about variables, okay? Just so you know, a variable is this, something that can change, All right? You can think of that as like in your math class when you have X or Y, right? That can be any number. Okay, so variables are things in experiment that we can change. Maybe it's a measurement that we change, or how much we put into something, okay, or how often we measure it, all right? But variables, that's, that's what a variable is. They can change, right? So an independent variable, right, that's a variable that, whose changes not depend on others, all right? So when we have an experiment, if you or I are the scientist, the independent variable is the thing that we change, okay? Nobody else does. So for each different trial that we're doing in the experiment, we change something, right? To see how it affects things. That's called the independent variable. Most of the time, although not always, time is an independent variable, okay? Because time really doesn't depend on anything else usually. You also have a dependent variable, right? It's a variable that changes depending on the independent variable. So a lot of times that's what you're measuring in an experiment. So we'll look at this later and we'll try and apply it to some examples. All right, here's another really important part of a valid experiment. You have to have a control. You should write this down, okay? A control is your baseline data. It's like the regular everyday thing, okay? You're going to compare your results against this control standard. Okay, so you have to have it in order to make a valid experiment. All right, well, let's take a look at some examples. Here we go. First one, we're going to determine how temperature changes as we heat up ice and melt it and then boil it. Okay, we'll start with, we'll put the thermometer in the ice for three minutes and take the temperature for 30 seconds, and then we'll start heating it. Okay, so what's the control? Our control is going to be the data that we compare everything else to. In this case, we start by not heating the water, right? Just by having it be there, and we take the temperature. So that's going to be our control, right? The most like real life, just ice sitting there, melting slowly. So our starting temperature is going to be our control. Okay, what's the independent variable? Well, the thing that we're, we're changing or measuring here is every 30 seconds, okay? Because time doesn't get determined by anything else. So in this case, the independent variable is going to be time, okay? And then what's the dependent variable? What are we measuring in this experiment? Any ideas? Well, in this case, is the temperature, okay? Well, let's move on and check out another example. This is something from second semester that we'll be looking at, but might as well look at it now. Okay, we've got two objects that are the same size, roughly, a pool ball and a tennis ball. But as you all probably know, the pool ball weighs much more than the tennis ball. So we'll roll the object down the ramp three times and we'll measure how far they roll. Okay, now it's the same ramp every time, right? And we start the balls at the same place. But what's the control in this experiment? Okay. Well, if we read, it says, see if heavier objects will roll farther than lighter objects. <laughs> well, in this case, let's say the control is the heavier object. In this case, that's the pool ball, right? Okay. Now, what's the independent variable? What are we changing? If you answer the mass of the ball, you are correct. Okay, what's the dependent variable? What are we measuring here? 
If you think about it, we're going to roll the object down the ramp and we're going to measure what? How far they roll, okay? Okay, so that is our experiment with our control, independent, and dependent variable. Okay, now here's where I want you to be doing some, some thinking as well. You gotta ask yourself, is this a valid experiment? Okay, so you have a house plant and you water it once a week on Saturday. Then all of a sudden, one, day, one week you notice on Wednesday that its leaves are drooping. So you water it and it perks up. You conclude you must water two times a week. Is that a good experiment? What do you think? Okay. Well, I'll tell you this. The answer is no. This is not a valid experiment. Okay. So I want you to see if you can come up with some reasons why this is not a valid experiment. Okay. We'll be discussing that in class when you come back. All right, well, here's the last one, and I want you to do this. I want you to design a valid experiment that does test how often you need to water house plants. All right, and be sure that you have in that your experiment a control, an independent variable, and dependent variable. All right, you also need to make sure that you have a, um, some constant things for those plants. Okay, things that don't change so that you can actually measure if water is the thing affecting the plants. We'll take a little bit of time right now and design your little experiment, and we'll be discussing that one as well when you come back to class. Thanks for tuning in, and I hope you have a great day.